Welcome back to GME Podcast, where you get all the latest and greatest news about games, movies, and entertainment. In today's video, we're going to be covering five things that Spider-Man Miles Morales did better than Marvel Spider-Man 2018. I will be covering this story with my good friends, Caduce. If you do enjoy what we're saying, please make sure you hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with the best superhero news on YouTube. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. One of the things that I noticed was stealth in this game. I do know Miles Morales came out in 2020, and that was a newer game compared to Marvel Spider-Man 2018 that released on the PlayStation 4. Even though this game did come out on the PlayStation 5, we do gotta take in consideration that it is still a game itself and it's still thought about from the same developers. I feel like Miles Morales stealth, even though he did have the camouflage, that it was a lot more uh, reliant on stealth in this game compared to Marvel Spider-Man 2018. Now, I do know it is an advantage since Miles Morales like I said, does have his camouflage modes, but I feel like in Marvel Spider-Man 2018, no matter how hard you try to stay in stealth mode, even if it's just like you webbing up a couple enemies, eventually it gets to the point to where you get caught and it's like, well, it's time for you to go out there and battle. Stealth mechanic in Miles Morales just felt natural because he came with a character, the ability to go invisible or to camouflage yourself within your environment. I would say that did give him an advantage in order to switch his approach during combat whatever he felt like it so you could just go back to being invisible and change your approach overall or you can just come and being invisible from the get-go and then take out your opponents one by one i would say it kind of made the gadgets feel so obsolete but they made him feel like it was a second choice to use so the gadgets plus the camouflage ability made the stealth mechanic feel much more effective Now, the atmosphere in Miles Morales just felt, you know, very cozy. Because obviously we had the snow effect in New York City. So swinging around New York in snow, you know, with Miles, obviously with his scarf and all that stuff, just made it feel like, you know, had the Christmas vibe, that festive period going around in the game. So it depends when you play the game. Because obviously I played it during Christmas time. So it did bring that kind of a festive experience or feel to it. So um, it's kind of a game that you want to play, you know, when you're cozy, you know, kick up your feet, grab your controller and just have some fun in the Marvel Spider-Man universe. So in my opinion, I think that just made it the whole um, atmosphere more special for a lot of people, uh, depending on when you played it. But obviously, I don't know which to prefer, whether it's the sunset filter or the snow filter. I think they're both gorgeous in my opinion, but I would say the snow filter all day. I 100% totally agree with what you're saying. I do enjoy how they did have that festive and Christmassy feeling. It kind of reminds me and other fans of Batman Arkham Origins, but Miles Morales definitely did have the better atmosphere compared to Marvel Spider-Man 2018, just because you can see a lot of people walking the streets of New York and even doing things like curling and having little events going on in different parts of the story, like when we were going to his mom's pep rally for mayor. I do feel like the Christmas streets of New York City and Miles Morales were a lot more alive compared to Marvel Spider-Man 2018 Another thing I did like how they did incorporate in the game is where you can see people depending on when the weather is changing, they're wearing different clothing, such as if the snow is a lot more heavier than it was in the daytime, you can see people wearing additional scarves and even having umbrellas, opposed to when it's sunny and it's not really snowing at all. They're wearing their regular snow attire, but I do like how they did incorporate the difference between the weather change and time of the day change. missions in 2018 Spider-Man was just something that people complain about because obviously they give us a chunky amount of MJ <laughs> you know what I mean so we were playing as MJ most of the time in the side missions you know uh, playing a stealth gameplay as MJ where we had to sneak into a facility here and there do us whole things people just didn't want that they just wanted to be swinging and kicking some ass as you know as Spider-Man <laughs> do you know what I mean so Miles Morales came along and had nothing to do with MJ or any side mission that wasn't around, you know, um, Miles Morales. So we had options to go and collect all the sound samples, we had the, um, the side quest with the rock songs, but all these are just things that are gonna actually lead to you of unlocking a new suit, which is all around Miles Morales. And obviously, as he was learning to be the only Spider Man in New York, it was just something that was revolving around him in order for him to actually find who he is and become who he's meant to be. So, in my opinion, I think the side missions in Miles Morales was just slightly better. I think the dev did listen, but obviously, yeah, you know what happened in the, in the following game, right? 
Exactly. When a developer listens to the people, you get gold. But you are right. Side missions were a lot better in Spider-Man Miles Morales just because you felt like as Spider-Man you were making a difference among the community. That was one of the things I felt better about playing Spider-Man Miles Morales than Marvel Spider-Man 2018. It's just like you said, people hated the MJ missions. They hated the screw out missions. They were literally the worst and I felt like they didn't have any purpose to the story or they were some super crazy side quests that nobody really even cared about opposed to playing Spider-Man Miles Morales where you were able to take on big level threats along with helping the little people across the streets of New York City. You were able to tie in helping the smaller people in New York opposed to playing the main story where you're taking on a rock sign and you're taking on the underground. You were able to incorporate both and I feel like Miles Morales implemented that both perfectly. Even if it's just something small like helping a fan take pictures or rescuing a couple cats across the cities. I feel like the people interaction were a lot better in Spider-Man Miles Morales than they were in Marvel Spider-Man 2018. The web swinging in Miles Morales was just about the same as that of 2018 Marvel Spider-Man. The only few differences I would say is because we have the Venom Dash, which is part of Miles' ability. So we could be swinging as Miles and then obviously switch into using the Venom Dash, which is going to leap you into further distance. I think that's just something that was added into the game, which made the whole experience more dynamic. Instead of, you know, using the same regular web swinging animations, you can switch up a bit just to have a little bit of fun. And obviously, if you play the game on launch on a PS5, with the ps5 controller i think that did add a little bit of an extra layer to the experience because you can toggle on and off if you wanted to play on the performance mode or if you need to play on the fidelity mode which then gave you an advantage because you could then play on 60 frames per second and have that smoothness in your gameplay but apart from that i would say maybe they did polish the game a little bit but it's not something that would be a deal breaker or that you would notice but yeah the venom dash definitely was a massive improvement it was very welcomed by everyone in the community and I totally love it to this day. As Kadu said, the Venom Dash was a huge improvement to the Spider-Man's Miles Morales swinging mechanics. In Spider-Man Miles Morales game, I love how they added to where if you needed that speed boost, you can dash yourself forward using the Venom Dash. And if you needed that rise in the sky, you can use the Venom Jump that allowed you to reach taller buildings in the game if you were too low to the ground and you didn't want to have to run up a building. I do enjoy how Miles Morales swinging gives it a smoothness to the player's gameplay and it feels as if it's more of a freestyle flow when you are swinging with Miles as it gives them different animations along with using the venom boost that allows miles to do a, either a venom spiral or a venom flip that was one of the things that fans love is the different animations that it gave miles depending on the speed and the velocity of the character and the way that the web would attach to the surface of the building as he is swinging i do like how even though miles morales is a younger spider-man he is a lot less developed as peter so if you were swinging and you landed on the ground wrong miles morales would not be able to catch himself and land on his feet like a more experienced Peter Parker would be able to, even if you gave Peter a more of a weaker animation, he would land on his feet or do a roll. Miles Morales would simply hit the ground and roll around until he's able to gather himself so he can start swinging again. The story Miles Morales just felt really short and for a lot of people that's a deal breaker but at the same time Insomniac managed to pack in a lot of emotions into a 15 hours long game so in my opinion I think I wouldn't say it's overall better but it's totally a different tone in how Insomniac approached the story in Miles Morales because I would say for a lot of people would say it's the better story because it's all revolving around Miles Morales because he lost his dad and then he had to you know go for to healing with his uncle you know trying to accept him back into the family so his best friend from childhood's come back and she's been through this tremendous experience which has left her in a dark place and now she's trying to crawl her way back out and now is you know trying to be there to help her to get her in, into a better place and you know that's how she became the tinkerer which is the you know she's the main villain in the game so um, in my opinion, I would say it's an experience and it's a story that's just revolving around Miles Morales because also he discovered his powers and trying to create a balance within his life and all the chaotic, you know, situations going on, you know, um, it's going to carry a really heavy load on your shoulders. So um, I would say the story did have a different approach. It did hit home in some kind of way. Um, you know, it, it's going to, you know, drive emotions, especially towards the end of the game where, you know, you make huge sacrifices for the people you love. So um, yeah, Miles Morales... Totally on the storyline, it might have felt short, but it was very, very impactful in terms of what it has to say and the kind of message it is delivering. This guy's Caduce, man, he's literally hitting everything on the nose, guys. We all know that Spider-Man Miles Morales was supposed to be DLC 
for Marvel Spider-Man 2018, but the developers decided to switch it and give Miles his own story, make him just for a little while New York's only Spider-Man, and I think that worked out perfectly. I do enjoy how Miles Morales, as I stated before in the video, he is a younger Spider-Man. He was younger than Peter when he first got his powers at the age of 12, and he's still trying to balance everything in life. I do enjoy how the story is shorter, and it isn't as rushed as most 15-hour campaign games will feel. Spider-Man Miles Morales is, like Skadoo said, it's more of a heartwarming story. It's around the holiday times, it's around the festivities. It gives more of a sentimental story when he has to battle his best friend friend. I feel like even though this Spider-Man is a younger Spider-Man, he is dealing with the loss of his father. He went from having both parents to only having one and then dealing with the weight of his shoulders on trying to protect his mom and his family between a battle of Roxanne and the underground. Now, I'm not saying that Marvel Spider-Man 2018 had a bad story at all. That's not what I'm saying. I can honestly see the comments going right now. I'm not saying that Marvel Spider-Man 2018 was bad at all. All I'm saying is Miles Morales gave fans a different angle and a perspective of a life of actually playing as Spider-Man as a teenager with dealing with seeing his best friend turn into the enemy and then sacrificing herself to save the city. So it's kind of one of those things like you see in the movies. It's a good guy that turned bad and then turned back good again. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys did enjoy this video. I honestly want to know what you guys think about it. Do you think what we're saying is correct? Do you think that Marvel Spider-Man 2018 had a better everything than Spider-Man Miles Morales? Let me know down in the comment section below, guys. It's there for a reason. We want you guys to use it. Thanks for tuning in to the channel. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel. And thanks for tuning in to GME Podcast.